Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? It's Cohen back here again tonight with another episode of After the Buzzer, the show where I recap the NBA games from the night. Um, a lot of you maybe were watching NFL Sunday today, and so you didn't get to see many of the games. So that's what I'm here to do is tell you about the games. Uh, there were five of them today. Um, and one that I really want to talk about, and in particular, it's a player I want to talk about, and that is Steph Curry on the Gold State Warriors. They played the Los Angeles Clippers today, and it was kind of a back and forth affair for a lot of this game. And then just in the fourth quarter, as the Warriors have really been doing all season, they just dominated completely. And of course, that is always led by Steph Curry, who got a technical foul in this game. And then after he got that technical foul, went berserk, hitting step back threes, hitting, he hit like a behind the back step back three, um, went crazy. And then after he made one of those crazy threes, gave the ref a technical, the one that gave him a technical as a celebration. And... Just watching these games as I continue to watch the Warriors more and more, and I know I've talked about the Warriors a good bit this season, but I have to because they're 18-2. and two. The more that I watch this Warriors team, the more confident I feel that this is the best team in the NBA right now, and in particular, they're the best team in the Western Conference. They're, they are my Western Conference favorites right now. I've said it a million times. Clay Thompson, he's coming back at some point. James Wiseman is going to come back too. They've got assets to make a trade if they want to go that route. This Warriors team is amazing. They're playing great basketball, of course, led by Steph Curry, and I've made it no secret that I think that Steph Curry at this point is my MVP favorite. He has to be with this team having the best record in the West. They've got a big matchup coming up against the Phoenix Suns on Tuesday. I'll definitely have a video out after that one where the winner of that, it, the Suns are 17 and three, the Warriors are 18 and two. So the winner of that game will be number one in the Western Conference. The Suns have a 16 game win streak on the line. That's going to be a great game and it's going to be a big test for this Warriors team. But the more that I watch them, um, outside of all the things that I just said, Steph being MVP, this Warriors team being uh, top of the Western Conference and top of the NBA at this point, I think I finally come to a decision. I've watched a lot of basketball. I watch basketball all the time. Um, and for the longest time, I've always been, LeBron's been my best player in the league. He has been for a long time. And then coming into this year at the end of last season, I made a video where I talked about who the best player in the league was. And there were a couple guys I named, namely, I named um, Steph Curry, Giannis, LeBron, and Kevin Durant, uh, Nicole Jokic, an honorable mention as well that you can put in this conversation. Kawhi Leonard, when he's healthy, those are like the top guys for me right now. I look at those guys and go, they're probably the best six players in basketball at this point. But I said I really didn't know who the best player in the league was. It felt like maybe it was Giannis, maybe it was Kevin Durant. Of course, Steph Curry was potentially the best player in the NBA overall over the course of last season. He was an MVP candidate. His team didn't make the playoffs. They just weren't very good and he missed some time. But he was a guy. And then, of course, LeBron James has just always been the guy. So I I just really haven't known who the best player in the league is un until now, I think. And... I was, I was thinking about it earlier. I was watching this game. Um, I was talking to some people in my group, Twitter group chats, talking to some of my roommates and stuff, just trying to figure this out. I think Steph's the best player in the league at this point. Right now, if I had to pick any player in the league to have on my team, I think it's Steph Curry. And that's big because um, I'm a guy who watched his Thunder team get destroyed by Steph Curry. A lot of Thunder fans hate Steph Curry, hate the Golden State Warriors. I personally don't. I loved watching them before they got Kevin Durant. And I'm glad that KD has left now because we get to see stuff like this with Steph going like crazy. We get to see the great team basketball. Of course, they played some great basketball with Kevin Durant there. It's one of like the most talented team of all time, probably. But it's cool to see Steph getting to do his thing again. And it just feels like, like th that was a conversation. Um, back in 2016, when the Warriors went 73 and nine and Steph had that crazy series against Portland and everything like that, people were talking about if Steph was the best in the world and I was still on the side of LeBron. And then he proved me right by helping the Cavaliers come back from down three, one in the NBA finals. And now it's back again. People are talking about Steph being the best player in the world. And I think I'm finally ready to agree with that. Um, Steph Curry right now is better than he was in his unanimous MVP season. He just is. Um, he is doing everything on a consistent nightly basis. Uh, he is carrying this team offensively, of course. Of course, there are some great players as well, but the things that Steph Curry does, his ability to affect the game in every facet, his playmaking is better. His defense is the best it's probably been in his career. At, at age 34, he continues to get better, and it feels like he's entered almost a second prime after having those years where he was alongside Kevin Durant. Of course, he was still amazing, but we didn't get to see quite the true scope of Steph that we're used to seeing. And now that he's back, he's the best player in the world. He right now, he is on pace to break his own three-point made record in a season. He hit 402 in that unanimous MVP season, and right now he's on pace to hit about 432 if I did my math right. 
432 threes in a season. That's ridiculous. That's, of course, like, I was going to say it's unprecedented, but of course it is. He's by far the best shooter we've ever seen. He might be the best offensive player in the league right now, alongside like Kevin Durant. He affects the game playmaking wise. He's playing good defense. He has his team playing the best basketball in the NBA right now without their second best player who we haven't even seen play yet. Imagine what him and the team are going to look like when they have Clay Thompson back and he's doing all of this. He's the best player in the world. And I think, I think that's kind of the decision that I've come to. It could change over the course of the year. This is a conversation that changes a lot. But for right now, if you ask me who the best player in the world is, I'm going to say it's Steph. And that's kind of crazy because I feel like I've been very wishy-washy on that. It's hard to commit to something like that when there are so many great players in this league. As I mentioned, Kevin Durant, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and I could be wrong. I could 100% be wrong. And I wouldn't be surprised if you disagreed with me. You could say one of those guys. You could say LeBron and I'd say, okay. Uh, you could say Nikola Jokic. You could say, oh, when Kawhi Leonard comes back healthy, he'll be the best, whatever. Sure, you could go with any of those guys. But I think those are the guys I would maybe give an argument to. But Steph's my pick. Watching him play, at least he's been the best player in the league this season. 100%. Like, the MVP is not even close right now. With the way that Steph's been playing and the way that the Warriors as a team have been succeeding, the way that he has orchestrated that team. And it's just cool to see Steph being back. Of course, we saw him back last season. And I've mentioned this before on this channel. But it's just good to see Steph not having to play alongside a guy like Kevin Durant anymore. It's nothing against KD. Um, he's a phenomenal player as well, but just to see Steph go out there, dominate teams, show people that he didn't really need Kevin Durant, that he's always been a phenomenal player on his own, which I feel like people forgot about prior to, or when KD got here, I feel like people just forgot how good Steph was, how much he has lifted Golden State up as a franchise even. Um... He's just, he is ridiculous. Uh, in this game in particular, 33, 5, and 6. Uh, like I said, absolutely dominated in the fourth quarter. Some of the shots that he hits are just unbelievable. If you showed his tape to like James Naismith, he might have a heart attack. Because there's no way he could have imagined that a guy like Steph Curry would show up. I didn't think anyone was going to beat this 403 points, three-pointers record in a season, the 402 record from Steph Curry's unanimous MVP season. I didn't think anyone was going to break it for a good bit. And here's Steph coming along to shatter his own record a few seasons later at age 34. It's ridiculous. Um, He's the best in the world and the Warriors are the best team in the NBA right now. I'm looking forward to that matchup against the Suns. That's all I really wanted to say. On the Clippers side of the ball, Paul George had 35 and five. He has continued to be good this season. Uh, 13 for Marcus Morris, 13 and 10 for Eric Bledsoe. Reggie Jackson had no points in 21 minutes. They're just, they're struggling as a team right now. They just don't quite have the depth that they need. Of course, they miss Kawhi Leonard, who maybe could come back this season. But for right now, Clippers are hovering right around 500 at 11 and 9. They'll be all right. They look like a playoff team so far. They were just no match for by far a better team. Next, I do want to talk about the Milwaukee Bucks for a little bit because they are on a roll right now. They've won seven straight, beating the Pacers in this one. They're just a game out, I think, of the top seed in the Eastern Conference with the Nets losing to the Suns. The Bucks are back. Um, right now, they kind of look like the team to beat out East. If I had to pick someone in the state that every team is in right now, I would pick probably the Milwaukee Bucks because the Nets, of course, miss Kyrie Irving. It's going to be interesting to see if he ever comes back because we really haven't heard anything on that front. But I think the Bucks, when fully healthy, are the best team in the Eastern Conference, and they're kind of showing that right now. Just dominating teams. Their schedule hasn't been anything crazy. They've played like the Thunder, uh, the Magic twice, the Pistons, the Pacers over the course of this stretch. But winning seven games straight in the NBA, especially for a team that, even though they've got their three stars back, are still missing an important piece in Brooke Lopez and missing some other important pieces every other night. It's still impressive for a team to put together a run like that. So shout out to the Milwaukee Bucks. They're getting things done right now. Giannis playing like an MVP. Drew, Chris doing the things they usually do. And their three-point shooters are killing it. Pat Connaughton, Grayson Allen, Bobby Portis, who I forget is like 25, 26 years old. He feels like he's 32 for some reason. Um, the Bucks are playing great basketball right now. And they look like, at the moment, the team to beat out East. Next, uh, the Lakers beating the Pistons by four. They were dominating in this game at one point. Like they were killing the Pistons and somehow they almost managed to blow it because that's what the Lakers do. But this was one of the best showings the big three have had in a while. 24, 10 and two from Anthony Davis, 33, five and nine from LeBron, 25, six and nine from Russell Westbrook. 
almost all the points that this team that scored came from those three guys. You had nine from DeAndre Jordan, 12 from Taylor Horton Tucker with eight rebounds, two from Malik Monk, five from Wayne Ellington. So you had a few, a few points here and there, but for the most part, it was almost entirely the big three. They dominated. They look like a big three should against a team that is far inferior to them. There was no fights or anything breaking out like that tonight after the whole Isaiah Stewart, LeBron James thing. Jeremy Grant with 32. He had a great game in this one. 15 and 11 rebounds for Kate Cunningham, 17 for Frank Jackson, 13 for Trey Lyles, and 10 for Hamadou Diallo. The Pistons, like I said, tried to put up a fight at the end, but the Lakers are just the better team. And they finally get a win over a team that they should. Next, uh, the Boston Celtics played the Toronto Raptors. Tatum was bad in this game. He had eight points, seven rebounds, and 10 assists. And I think he, he shot, at one point he was shooting like one for 12. Um, that might've even been how he finished. I forget, either way. Horrible shooting night from Tatum, who has just been super inconsistent over the course of this season. 15 from Grant Williams, who has been really solid as a role player uh, over the course of this year. He's the only player in the NBA right now, averaging 50, 40, 90, which is kind of ridiculous. 17 and 11 from Al Horford, 21, 8 and 6 from Marcus Smart, 16 from Jalen Brown, 18 from Josh Richardson in a 12 point win over the Toronto Raptors, 18 from Siakam, 21 from Scotty Barnes. They were missing OG Ananobi in this one. They really missed him in this. They could have used his defense as well as some extra scoring. 27 from Fred Van Vliet and 12 from Sfima High Luke, uh, 8 from Malachi Flynn. Just kind of missing their usual guys um, overall. Missing OG Ananobi, who's been a phenomenal player for them so far. They're at 9 and 12 right now, the Raptors. The Celtics move to 11 and 10 as they kind of try to find that rhythm again. And finally, we have the Sacramento Kings getting absolutely blown out at one point by over 30 points to a Memphis Grizzlies team, uh, losing 101 to 128 by 27. That didn't have John Morant. No John Morant, winning by 27 points, uh, 17 from Jaron Jackson Jr., 21 from Dylan Brooks, 18 from Desmond Bain, 6, 8, and 3 from Tyus Jones, 7 from Kyle Anderson, 14 from D'Anthony Melton, 15 from Brandon Clark, uh, winning 128 to 101. Um, everyone <laughs> put up a bunch of points. Only 12 from De'Aaron Fox, who only played 21 minutes because this was a blowout. 5 from Tyrese Halliburton. Um, 14 from Heald, 11 from Davion Mitchell, 12 from Louis King, who doesn't really get minutes, so shout out to him, uh, 5 from Marvin Bagley, and the Kings got destroyed, which makes the Lakers' loss in triple overtime to the Kings look even worse. I want to give a shout to Dylan Brooks, who played 21 points in 21 minutes. That's big for him, and if he is able to stay healthy and stay productive for this Grizzlies team, it helps them out a lot. He's missed a bunch of time over the course of this season, so hopefully this is his chance to kind of come back and stabilize, be the guy that they need him to be, that defensive anchor at the guard position as well as maybe giving them a consistent like 15 to 20 points per game a night that would be huge for them and if he's able to do that then it really helps this Grizzlies team raise their ceiling a little bit when John Morant does come back thankfully he avoided major injury so he should be back I think they said in like a couple of weeks which is amazing to see because the injury did not look good so happy for John Morant happy for the Grizzlies and Grizzlies fans so that's the end of the video. I appreciate y'all watching. If you made it to this point, uh, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let's see if we can hit maybe like 100 likes on this one. I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, if you did make it this far, leave a let me know down below who your best player in the league is. If it is Steph Curry, say I agree with you. Steph is the best in the comment section below. So I, I will see you all later. Real one, say it back.